Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. In my previous video related to amplitude modulation, I discussed about the generation of a double sideband full carrier signal using square law modulator. So basically a double sideband full carrier signal consists of the carrier signal and both the sidebands that is the lower and the upper sidebands. So I have uh, explained all that in the square law modulator for generation of double sideband full carrier signal. So before uh, going through this video, I, rec I would recommend you to go through that video so that you understand this, uh, this video in a better way. So today we are going to discuss about the switching AM modulator method for generation of a double sideband full carrier amplitude modulated signal. So let's get started. So the basic circuit diagram for the generation of uh, DSBFC signal through switching AM modulator looks something like this. It consists of the carrier signal EC cos omega CT, the message signal EM cos omega MT, uh, diode, uh, output resistance and a band pass filter okay these are the components involved in a switching am modulator so please draw this diagram in rough or get a screenshot of it so that you understand the remainder steps uh, in mathematical descriptions in a better way okay so get a screenshot of it or draw it in rough so these are the components involved and are connected in this fashion for a switching AM modulator. Now, the working principle. The operation of the switching modulator circuit is based on the switching action or the on and off action of the diode. Now we know that a PN junction diode gets turned on or it's forward biased when the P end or the positive end or the P type end is connected to the positive terminal is at a higher potential and the N type end is connected at a lower, lower potential. Basically it operates in the forward bias. So here the combined input signal that is uh, vi as a function of t is given by the addition of the message signal and the carrier signal em cos omega mt plus ec cos omega ct this combined input signal controls the on and off action of the diode okay so the diode conducts only when the combined input signal is positive okay so for that to happen the magnitude of the carrier signal should be way more than that of the message signal so that the diode is always the p type end of the diode is connected to is connected at a higher potential than the n type n okay so the condition for the forward bias condition or the forward bias operation of the diode is that the magnitude of the carrier signal should be greater than that of the message signal. So depending upon the carrier signal and the message signal, the on and off action of the diode happens periodically, which is controlled by the carrier pulse strain signal CT. Now this on and off action is called as the switching action and that's why this uh, uh, this technique or this method is called as switching modulator method. It is because that the DSBFC signal is generated by the on and off action of the diode, which is called as switching. Okay, so for that, the two things which we have to remember here is that the net input signal controls the on and off action, and the diode conducts or it is an on only when the magnitude of the carrier signal is greater than that of the message signal or the modulating signal. These are the two important things to remember. 
Now, the on and off action of the diode is or can be described with the help of a function which is called as the switching function. It is called as the switching function of the diode. It can be expressed as per the following relationship. The switching function uh, can be is dependent on time. It's, meant, it's described as a function of time st, which is given by 1 by 2 plus 2 by pi into cos omega ct minus 1 by 3 cos 3 omega ct and further plus 1 by 5 cos 5 omega ct minus 1 by 7 cos 7, 7 omega ct and so on. So basically it is a uh, Fourier series expansion of sorts. This is called as a switching function or the on and off action of the diode which is controlled by the carrier pulse train and the message signal. Now the output signal which is uh, fed to the bandpass filter is given as the product of the combined input signal that is the addition of the message and carrier signal multiplied with the switching function given by this okay the output signal is the product of the combined input signal and the switching function so it can be written as mt plus ec cos omega ct into 1 by 2 plus 2 by pi cos omega ct minus 1 by 3 cos 3 omega ct plus 1 by 5 cos 5 omega ct and so on. So now we get on simplification we get the following terms mt by 2 plus ec cos omega ct uh, by 2 plus 2 by pi mt cos omega ct and higher order terms. Now for a DSBFC signal take note here for a double sideband full carrier signal we need these two terms only which is the carrier signal and the uh, lower and upper sideband signal DSB SC signal double sideband suppressed carrier signal we need only these two terms for the generation of a double sideband full carrier signal all the other terms are unnecessary okay take note here we need only these two terms to be transmitted all the other terms are unnecessary so for extracting these two terms only the output is passed through a band pass filter having a sharp cutoff frequency which is defined by plus minus omega c the range of frequency is from minus omega c to plus omega now, when this output signal is passed through the band pass filter, the frequency components which are passed are the carrier signal component and these double sideband suppressed carrier signal and all the other terms are suppressed. So, we have the final output given by ec cos omega ct by 2 plus 2 by pi mt cos omega ct which is the carrier signal and the double sideband suppressed carrier signal consisting of the lower and upper sidebands so this is the generation of a double sideband full carrier signal consisting of the carrier signal and the DSB SC signal or double sideband suppressed carrier signal consisting of both sidebands with the help of a switching AM modulator. So, I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel Engineering Tutorial for more such videos related to electrical, electronics, communication and instrumentation engineering. Have a great day. Thank you very much.